stage to take pictures that will help our ceremony tremendously. At this time, graduates, please remain standing. Guests, please rise. Move your hands.
As mentioned, I am Olivia Stoddard, and I had the great privilege of being 2019's class president. I would quickly like to thank my parents, Eric and Maria Stoddard, for always believing in me, my sister Sam for guiding me, my teachers for pushing me, and of course, my close friends who have been there with me through it all. Without you guys, I could not have made it through the past four years. I might seem somewhat calm and collected right now, besides the obvious nerves, but if you would have seen me two weeks ago, I was a complete wreck. The idea of leaving high school has been unsettling to say the least. I have grown up with all of you and you are the majority of my memories. During the last week of school, one of my teachers, Mr. Dan Schneider, told our class that sometimes to get to the beginning, you must first reach the end. Now, regardless of the fact that he was talking about a sociology chapter, this phrase really stuck with me. It's what I believe is happening today. It is the end of an era, but it's the beginning of so much more. A difficult part about senior year for me was that it was constantly being referred to the year of last. So this afternoon, I would want to bring up some of our firsts. Today feels like the first day of kindergarten again, when we held our mom's hands as we waited for the bus to come around the corner. As you looked up into your mom's eyes, you were confused that they were welling with tears because you just couldn't wait to get on the bus. But as it approached the driveway, you felt the slight lump in your throat. You held your mom's hands just a little bit tighter before you slipped right through her fingertips and ran towards those steps. As you look back, it was your first idea of not being, of when you can't wait to get going, but you're just not quite ready to leave. That's how today feels. I still remember my first day of first grade when I turned to the girl sitting next to me and asked her if her shirt was from Limited 2. 13 years later and Lauren O'Brien is still my best friend. And of course, I can't forget my first month of freshman year when I, spoiled, when I spilled spoiled coffee in the locker area and it, no exaggeration, stunk up the entire freshman hallway. I don't think I've gone a single week of high school without hearing about it, being reminded of it, but it was awful when it happened, but funny now. That's one of the things I love most about this class, our ability to make a joke out of pretty much anything. I am so grateful to have been a part of the group as special as this one. I never did the class president thing for the perks or the recognition. I did it because I genuinely care about each and every one of you. I believe that you guys have the power within you to make each of your days better than the last. I look out among you guys and I'm so excited for what's to come, even though it does break my heart to leave you guys behind. One thing I admire most about this class is our sense of fellowship. Like the last night of, of the night of the last basketball game. I've never felt a student section so involved. With tears in our eyes, we sang Onward Linden one last time, and we were just so proud of what we had. Or on the last day of school, when many of us gathered in the parking lot before first hour. Some kids were grilling, most were talking. One kid even brought an RV. I even saw Mr. Dredsky play a game or two of cornhole, and we all were just in it together. We didn't care if we had to get up early. We wanted to do it, just to be with one another. We have dealt with difficulties, heartbreak, and even revenge against some tigers a few miles away. Nonetheless, we did it together. And as we separate from each other, this feeling will stay. I look upon you, class of 2019, and I know that I have friendships that will last a lifetime. But an eagle cannot stay in its cage its whole life. We have learned to grow and how to spread our wings. And even though we will not be together physically, we will always remember the time we had with one another. I am so proud of each and every one of you. From the bottom of my heart, I wish you all years of success and a lifetime of happiness. I love you, Linden High. Forever and always, go Eagles. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia. At this time, I'd like to direct your attention to the north end of the gym. As Mr. John Bennett, musical director, directs the Linden High School Wind Ensemble as they perform Iron and Ice, arranged by Randall Standridge.
Thank you, Mr. Bennett and Wind Ensemble. At this time, I would like to welcome another extraordinary young lady, class of 2019 valedictorian, Miss Audrey Steyer. thank yous to the people who made this day possible. First, on behalf of the class of 2019, thank you to the teachers and faculty here at LHS. Thank you for the hours of instruction in the classroom, the many hours outside of class, and just being so invested in our education, both intellectually and personally. Secondly, thank you to everyone sitting here in the audience today. Clearly, your dedication to sit through another one of these three-hour ceremonies is proof of your de devotion to us through our years here at Linden. Thirdly, I'd like to thank the class of 2019 itself. We most certainly would not be here today without the people sitting in the chairs next to us. We all had friends we relied on to get us where we are today. And finally, thank you to Linden High School. Because without it, we never would have learned how long we can postpone going to the bathroom because they were always locked, or that each and every one of us could live in the Arctic because we ate lunch in the senior commons. So thank you, LHS, for teaching us to be versatile. As our time here comes to an end, let's take a moment and reflect on our class's impact these past four years, which I think will give everyone a very good glimpse of who our class is. From freshman to senior year, we have incontestably swept the homecoming float building competition. As juniors, our powder puff team, coached by Mr. Cox and Mr. Darling, was the first class to beat the seniors, even despite some spotty roughing and clock runners, and then we followed through our senior year for an undefeated run. Furthermore, sitting here among us, there's a d diverse group of kids, members of an accomplished band who were there for, for what seemed like all of Saturday. We have numerous athletes sitting among us, many in more than one sport, some being all staters. Then there's members of Student Council, National Honor Society, SAD, and LINK. All require time outside of school. And last, but certainly not least, I have to recognize our killer student section. I mean, your dedication was unwavering and school pride through the roof. Clearly, our class is exceptional. So when Mr. Dredsky told Joe and I that we had to write a speech, I turned to her and said, man, I wish they would have given us a rubric or something. That would be so much easier. But then I realized, that's the point. Our time of rubrics has ended. I mean, actually think about it. Every assignment throughout our four years has literally been decided for us, a set of guidelines given. We did not have to make any decisions. Quite honestly, as long as we were proficient in following directions, we got a decent grade on this project. But now, as we leave high school and prepare for our next endeavors, it's time to make our own decisions, which is both scary and exciting. Nonetheless, our teachers have told us time and time again that our four years at LHS have prepared us to be successful. Successful. What does that really mean? For most of us, when we label a person as successful, it typically describes someone who has a lot of money, a prestigious job, and a nice car and house. But I don't believe that's the correct definition. It's like on the SAT, and it's one of those questions on the reading portion that says, as used in line 38, blank most nearly means, and you're like, yes, finally an easy one. So you're going through all the options all confident, crossing out all the ones you know aren't the answer, until you realize when you look back up that you crossed out all your options, and you're like, oh crap. Except, let's be honest, you probably said a different word in your head. That's because some words have multiple definitions, which is unfortunate in our case for the SAT. But to my point, class of 2019, I oblige you to consider an alternate definition of success, one that's not defined by the quantity of material objects, but rather use success to describe someone who is happy. Because I believe the person who is genuinely happy is the most successful person. Moreover, success will look different for everyone, which is a good thing. For some people, it may be having a job that allows them to travel, or maybe it's being a stay-at-home parent, or maybe it's being a brilliant surgeon. Who knows? But that way, each person is just as capable of becoming successful as the next. Because realistically, not everyone in this graduating class will be a millionaire with fancy cars and a vacation house in Hawaii. So I urge you to make decisions in your life based on the amount of happiness that you'll gain. Discover what makes you happy and go after it. I sincerely hope that each and every one of you finds something you're as passionate about as Mr. Schneider is for poetry, as Dr. George is for the Scarlet Letter and Kenny Chesney, as Nick Bentley is for fishing, and as all the guys are for Nick Bentley.
And when you're done, try not to compare yourself to others. The truth of the matter is that you are different from them. You're, and, you're, you're, ugh, and you're supposed to be. So instead of comparing yourself to what they've done, find what you can do and attack it. There's a famous quote by Michael Jordan. Champions are made when no one is watching. However, I do not believe that quote was fitting for our class. Yes, I believe we are champions, or will be in the future, but the world will be watching. They'll be watching us to see what we do next, how we impact the world. I mean, come on, we already have a movie star sitting among us. So, I've heard enough Dr. Seuss and Gandhi quote, quotes at one of these things to last us a lifetime. Not to undermine Gandhi here in any way, because honestly, I don't think any one of us could lead a 240 mile start march. Okay, actually, I take that back because Mr. Lawhorn could, and he wouldn't just march it, he'd run it. Rather, I'd like to finish with a quote from someone who I wish more than anything could be here. Someone who is and will always be one of my biggest role models and who has left an everlasting impact on us. Our beloved, crazily loud and fun middle school gym teacher, Mr. Cargell. I don't think this could be more fitting and I couldn't possibly say it better myself. So, class of 2019, I leave it to him. From Mr. Cargell himself, you can be anything that you wanna be if you put your mind to it and really de dedicate everything you have and throw yourself right at it. Good luck, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey. At this time, I'd like to introduce the Linden High School Chamber Ensemble, again directed by Mr. John Bennett, as they perform A Dream is a Wish Your Heart Makes by Audrey Schneider.
Thank you, Mr. Bennett and Chamber Ensemble. At this time, presenting the congratulatory message from the Board of Education, I'd like to introduce Mr. Scott Maker, Linden Board of Education President. Thank you, Mr. Dresky. On behalf of the Board of Education, I'm privileged to speak to you today and congratulate our graduating class of 2019. Today, our community joins together, administrators and staff, family and friends, to celebrate this important milestone in your lives. In the short time allotted me, it's always difficult to capture an idea or a meaningful message that's appropriate to this moment. I look back on my notes from the many previous graduation ceremonies I've spoken to and found a trend in my comments, and I want to focus on that. The word most uh, used most frequently is community. In fact, I've, always I've already used it once today. I want to make that my point because all of you are a product of the Linden community. The home of the Eagles, your home. Most of you have been engaged in various activities during your time in this building, participating in extracurricular programs, volunteering and service projects. Beyond the academic requirements of school, these things helped you to find a new interest or challenge yourself to attain something much greater than you thought possible. Most importantly, through these activities, you probably found that you can do much more if you don't have to do it by yourself. There's a proverb out there that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. I'd like to paint a picture of your lives to this point in, as a race. Thinking of track and field events, sprints involve a few competitors relatively equal in abilities, and the traveling a short distance relatively quickly. A marathon can involve many thousands of, of participants, elite runners at the front, recreational runners at the back. Having run some distant races in my life, I think those runners in the marathon who cross the finish line last find as much satisfaction as the winners do. Finishing to them was just an accomplishment and there's satisfaction to be found in that. The journey that's brought you here today was not done alone and I don't think any of you would think it's been fast. You faced your own challenges and adversity and attained what you have because of those around you. Your classmates, teammates, teachers, coaches, administrators, family and friends, your community. We're all here to celebrate you, with you today because all of you have finished this race. Some finished at the front, some crossed the line last, but all of you succeeded. And in that, there's something to be proud of find personal satisfaction in the fact that you have all finished. No matter where your path leads from the doors here at Linden High School, the hallways and classrooms you know so well, the familiar faces around you, you'll never be lost because you always have a home and a community that genuinely cares about you. Congratulations, class of 2019. We wish you all the best of luck in achieving your future endeavors. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Maker. Giving the commencement address to the class of 2019 will be somebody very familiar to you. Current LSR staff member, former Linden Middle School staff member, and somebody that's been on your educational journey for the past several years. Please help me welcome Cheryl Elmer. Thank you. A couple of tough acts to follow today, so the girls did awesome. Good afternoon, 2019 fam. Wow, how the time has flown. It seems like yesterday that we were strolling through the halls of Linden Middle School singing, shut up and dance with me. Well, maybe that was just me. Back when your most pressing questions were, who should I room with in Washington, D.C., and is the dress blue and black or white and gold? It was a time from media days, flannel Fridays, and M-Step ice cream Sundays to Cedar Point, our amazing dodgeball champions, and class in the grass. When I was approached about giving this speech, I'm not gonna lie, my first reaction was an overwhelming sense of fear. You know the kind of fear I'm talking about, probably similar to how you feel when you think you've lost your 600 day snap streak. My second thought was, 
how do I work in a selfie? So we're going to get that out of the way right now. These deeply introspective thoughts were followed almost immediately by a surge of love for the class of 2019 and a gratitude at being included in this momentous occasion. Unbreakable bonds and long-lasting memories are formed during the middle school years, and while I knew you would flourish at the high school, I was beyond sad to see you go. A year later, I was granted a gift a one-way ticket to LHS to spend three more glorious years with you. It was through this gift that we were able to reinforce our bonds and make them stronger. What a rare opportunity for an educator to spend so many years with one group of students, and I'm so glad it was you. Since I have your undivided attention, which you know is my dream come true, I would like to share with you a thought for each of our years together. So consider yourselves lucky that I started as your eighth grade math teacher and not your kindergarten teacher, because I have no shortage of thoughts to share, as I'm sure you've come to learn. In honor of your eighth grade year, let's start our talk by reminiscing about a simpler time, middle school. When you entered middle school, you were your authentic selves and had little concern for pretense. You were eager to make new friends. You were eager to learn. You were eager to please. You were eager to be called on in class. In short, you were eager, ready to be taught, and most importantly, ready to participate in your own development. You assumed you were smart, talented, and good looking. This purity in your confidence was inspiring and such a joy to be around. I challenge you to return to this feeling when you go out into the world following graduation. No matter where you are headed, arrive there eager, prepared to give each and every experience everything you have. Remember back to when you believed you could do anything? You were right. Your attitude and confidence are everything. Believe in yourself unconditionally, like you did in middle school. If you can do this, there is no limit to what you can accomplish. During your freshman year, I was not with your class on a daily basis. However, you were all only a thought away. I imagined you were focused on segment one of driver's education that year. And to commemorate this very important piece of work, I want to dispel a myth purported by society, a complete falsehood, a fabrication as it were. Parallel parking is a necessary skill. I don't care what people tell you. You will miss out on all of the best parking spots if you don't hone this lost art. Trust in this fact, friends. Some of the most rewarding aspects of life just require a little extra effort. Not everything in life is easy or will come naturally to you. In fact, quite the opposite is true. The important things in life will require your attention, focus, and respect. Put in the time and commit and reap the rewards, some of which will be far richer than the best parking spot. Do you want to know what I've always liked about sophomores? They have a pretty realistic view of the cause-effect relationship between actions and consequences. This age is a perfect combination of having been around long enough to know what's going on and not quite long enough to be insulted by the mere suggestion that they aren't quite adults yet. I'm not trying to imply that sophomores can do no wrong. Oh no, they do plenty of wrong, and right for that matter. What I'm saying is that they don't usually expect to get something for nothing, nor are they surprised when they are punished for wrongdoing. I've always appreciated and respected their simple acceptance of the repercussions of their actions. Moving forward, my wish for you is your return to this mentality. All actions, good or bad, have consequences. Accept this narrative. 
and wherever possible, do things the right way, the honest way, trusting in the fact that the path to your dreams is best reached with hard work and a deference to rules, fairness, and integrity. While reaching your goals in this righteous manner may seem at times burdensome and exhausting, I promise you, friends, that this is the only path by which you arrive fulfilled and rich with satisfaction. Ah, the junior year, the year when many decide to get super involved in everything. Sometimes too much and enjoyment might have been sacrificed as a result. If this describes you, first of all, thank you. Please don't take this as a criticism. Without you, we as an institution would be lost. Your involvement makes this school and world a better place. Beyond that, being involved in life is imperative to feeling a sense of direction and purpose. But as you prepare to leave these hallowed halls, I urge you to be more selective and thoughtful in your choices. Stop resume building and start involving yourselves in groups and activities about which you are passionate. Join a club because it interests you. Volunteer because you want to. Join a campaign because you believe in it. Play a sport just for fun. Stay involved, but make it mean something to you. Make it relevant and fulfilling for you. P.S. I'm starting a Slurpee Enthusiast Club in the fall, and I am looking for members. Many people will be asking, if they haven't already, what do you want to be when you leave high school? As your senior year thought, I implore you to spend as much or more time pondering who you want to be. Your life path is important, but the person you are walking this path is a game changer. That person will determine the quality of your relationships and the way you feel about yourself when your head hits the pillow each night. Your who is your soul, your character, the very essence of you. As you leave us, don't be afraid to take your who in a different direction. Even the best of us should strive to improve our who each day. It is a lifelong battle between easy and hard, sincere and insincere, compassionate and self-centered, humble and arrogant, forgiving and vengeful, and a host of other difficult choices. Make your who someone you can be proud of. Make your who someone that others strive to emulate. Make your who your legacy. Well, I somehow managed to get through this speech without tears, at least not yet. I have such a wide range of emotions right now. I'm extremely proud of you, beyond sad to see you go, and so excited for the journeys upon which you're about to embark. Most of all, though, I find myself eternally thankful to have been on your journey with you for even a short while. Thank you for making me a part of your lives. I have enjoyed being Mama E, Elm, and even Schlem. I'm sure there were other countless nicknames of which I'm not aware and would like to remain so. I have a host of memories I will always treasure that involve each and every one of you. I have many wishes for you, and as luck would have it, they were condensed into a song that I just might have played on repeat loudly at the end of last year. So as a throwback to that, and because I can't say it any better than Jason Mraz, here's to the good times we're going to have. Here's to you always making me laugh. Here's to the fact that I'll be sad without you. I want you to have it all. I love you. Thank you, Mrs. Elmer. We've come to the portion of our ceremony as two members of our honor guide position themselves to present the graduating class of 2019. It is my honor and privilege to attest that each of these students before you has successfully completed Michigan Merit Curriculum, Linden Community Schools and Linden High School requirements for graduation, and now deserves to receive their diploma signifying their graduation from Linden High School.
I will ask if you please refrain from your applause until we get through. It makes it difficult sometimes for everybody to hear their names, so I would appreciate that. Maxwell James, top 18, summa cum laude. Hayden Mahakian, top 18, summa cum laude. Emma Lavoie, top 18, summa cum laude. Lily Sturgis, top 18, summa cum laude. Laura Saad, top 18, summa cum laude. Delaney Baumgartner, top 18, summa cum laude. Aaron Gillespie, top 18, summa cum laude. Taylor Jones, top 18, summa cum laude. Lauren O'Brien, top 18, summa cum laude. Audrey Steyer. Valedictorian, summa cum laude, top 18. Jordan Moros, salutatorian, summa cum laude, top 18. Ashley Crane, top 18, summa cum laude. Cole Wicknick, top 18, summa cum laude. Alexandria Morse, top 18, summa cum laude. Brenna O'Connell, top 18, summa cum laude. Brooke Hahn, top 18, summa cum laude. Rachel Dodds, top 18, summa cum laude. Cameron Hawkins, top 18, summa cum laude. Jeffrey Simberg, Jr. Krista Lopez, cum laude. Haley Hart, summa cum laude. Morgan Losey, magna cum laude. Paxton Cowan, cum laude. Kyle Chowning, summa cum laude. Robert Twomley, cum laude. Joshua Appleberg, summa cum laude. Stephen Stiles. Nicholas Kidd. Yeah. 
Sydney Monzi Honors. Nicholas Schrabel, magna cum laude. Elizabeth Gilmer, honors. Devin Hubbard. Madison Philippi, honors. Chase Stanky, honors. Samantha Meinbrook, honors. Victoria Johnson. Samantha Seeger, honors. Allie Huckel, cum laude. Dylan Paget, Ryan Schubert, Alan Lay, cum laude. Jack Pizzoni. Camden Fletcher, magna cum laude. Colton Walker, cum laude. Tawny Green, honors. Bailey Mamp. Derek Vanderport. Taylor Acox. Haley McSide. Kyle Miller. Logan Paget honors. Wade Minor, cum laude. Gage Sperlin, magna cum laude. Dakota Nichols. Brendan Shaw. Brianne Blevitt.
Abigail Zan. Lauren Gaucher, honors. Madeline Smith, cum laude. Ava Darling, honors. Noah Cannell, summa cum laude. Garrett Durkak, summa cum laude. Damon Wiesman. Cameron Finnegan, magna cum laude. Jeffrey Metzger. Richard Lynn II. Parker Mabe, honors. Olivia Stoddard, honors. Nicholas Bentley, cum laude. Matthew Witted. Maxwell Gatza, summa cum laude. Shane Mong, cum laude, magna cum laude. Drew Kruger, summa cum laude. Donovan Crato. Trisha Drew. Christina Lakowitz, honors. Faith Baldwin. Gregory Wikes. Emily Hudson, honors. Luke Kenny, honors. Tyler Hart, summa cum laude. Cassidy McKissick. Leah LaDrew. Elena Newman. Braden Anthony Banasic, honors. Corinne Rieger, honors. Oh, 
Easton Giacomantonio, honors. Ryan McDowell, honors. Alma Pestana Ramos, foreign exchange student. <laughs> Isabella Thompson, cum laude. Cameron Hatfield, honors. Savannah Ronald. Jared Buswell, summa cum laude. Pia Seidel, foreign exchange student. Josie Sorum, summa cum laude. Caden Snodgrass, honors. Josh Clift. Luke Gibson, magna cum laude. Travis Klosek, honors. Lauren Maiden, honors. Kelly Cool. Madison Nelson. Jack Fisher. Tucker Whitman. Cody Swain, honors. Jonathan Huff. Ryan Thurman. Joseph Dalton, cum laude. Elena Bradley, cum laude. Evan Hill. Summer Moore, honors. Luke Muldoon. Connor Jones, honors. David Childers. Paul Henrich. Maisie Matney, 
honors. Kobe Hall, honors. Jacob Welsh. Cameron Miller. Mitchell Kerr. Kayla Armstrong. Gavin Little Fetzer. Taylor Beeling. Jace Bergen. Claudia. Crosby. Mason Richards. Asia Meredith. Adam Glazier. Kenzie Sage. Isabella Orsini. Bryce Keating. Stephen Julesevin. Hannah Marshall, magna cum laude. George Walterhouse, honors. Congratulations, Emma Ford. Emma Ford, cum laude. Caleb White. Lewis Walter House the third, Magna Cum Laude. Sabra Robinson, Summa Cum Laude. Kirsten Bankert, honors. Jacob Mazur. Marissa Zaccardi, magna cum laude. Riley Henson. Abriana Sanderson. Emma Parrish. Autumn Stamos, honors. Brianna Zabkowitz, honors.
Preston Parker. Alexander Zerka. Aaron Caret. Darian Kelly, honors. Tegan Kelly, cum laude. Holly Sherman, honors. Madison Nastali, magna cum laude. Caleb Newville. Aiden McConnell. Taylor Campbell. Rachel Morton. Megan. Carone. Nicholas Perkins, cum laude. John Miller, honors. Andrew Armstrong, honors. Tanner Engberg, honors. Bradley Melville. Jacob Herman, honors. Brendan Jacoda. <laughs> Nicholas Kiros. <laughs> Devin Radowski. <laughs> Robert Ragnone. Jacob Einfeld. <laughs> Kyla Harmon. <laughs> Annika Brady, magna cum laude. Madison Eldred. Michael Novak. Melissa Thompson. Anna Gergel. Cum laude. Madison Van Wold. Emily Miller. Sarah Vesper.
Liam Murray. Ryan Wilbring, honors. Jonathan Marmy. Parker Cooley. Brendan Shannon. James Lang. Gabrielle Gilman. Daphne Miller. Madeline McCarthy. Samuel Beaver. Alexander Lang, honors. Andrew Horn. Chase Keating. Joel Fogoth. Joseph Doty, honors. Kyle Brown. Tanner. Burns. Kai Kenny Bacchus. Olivia Wood. Nolan Porter. Ricardo Cruz, honor. Benjamin Thomas. Samuel Arceo. Taylor Beggs. Jackson Shelp. You guys the last two? Yeah. Sean Myers. Johnny Irwin. Congratulations to the class of 2019. Before we dismiss, I'd like to provide some thanks to the teachers that are in attendance today from Linden Community Schools that have impacted each and every one of you. Teachers that have spent countless hours with your sons and daughters to be the best that they can be. Graduates, today you leave as educated young adults about to embark on the next chapter of your life. 
Take advantage of the opportunities that come your way. Don't shy away from the challenges. Don't be afraid to fail. And don't be afraid to ask for help or lean on those that can help you. You are prepared for what lies ahead. Graduates, while Olivia comes and makes her way to the stage and our honor guard gets in position, just one reminder that your diplomas will be in the cafeteria after the ceremony. Olivia, ring the bell. <laughs> 